Lexi interviews MJF. I mentioned the lows in the show. So uh, he's, everything's going fine for a while. He puts Takeshita over. It's not your fault. You're no match for a generational talent like myself. Then he starts, starts to talk about adversity. And he tells a tale of taking the hot girl home from a dance or a football game and uh, wrecking the car. And then he here live on national television confessed to at least vehicular assault, if not manslaughter. I'm still not sure entirely. But he said there was a wreck. At one point, he said she was still breathing, but later addressed her lifeless body and talked about uh, switching places so the cops would think she was driving the car. And he said this happened in high school. He's still a young man. This was not that long ago. I don't think that, that this, this woman was supposed to be dead. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think a lifeless body was a, a figure of speech. Yeah. But... Uh... So this is another one here today. Uh, I, 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 so he mentioned a Liv, okay? As we called her, yes, for legal and reasons. He's not a real name. But for, for some reason, I, I, you know, I, I can't say anything. There's some story written about something, that, and people are talking about how he was talking about Liv Morgan, and they were attributing me to what? that. What? I never, never said it was Liv Morgan. What I said was there was okay. So this, this. Uh, this promo was one of those MJF promos where he wants to take something from his real life and use it to cut a promo. And uh, and a, a, a large part of this story was true, okay? There was a girl named Liv that he was really hot for in high school. Uh, they did have a good time, I think. That's the uh, rumor. But it, this was not in the car. And, uh, and he did get in a very, very serious car accident that involved hydroplaning and running into a tree. But apparently it was him and all of his high school buddies. So he did have a very, very serious accident in high school. And what he did was, I guess he took that story and he uh, embellished it and then added the thing at the end about how, you know, he had, he had one strike left. One more strike, he wasn't going to have a license anymore. And so to avoid the last strike, he switched places with this Liv. Mm -hmm. So the cops thought that she was driving, and she got busted and not him. And, of course, the the moral of it is that he's a despicable person, and he's going to make Brian Danielson's life miserable and and this, that, and the other. But it uh, it was a story based on reality. But obviously, it didn't actually happen like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the the when he gets to the end, like when he's first telling the story, I you know, most of the story I, I was believing until he got to the end and he claimed he switched places with her. And at that point, it was like, this is ridiculous. Like, this is preposterous. OK, but and this was also denied by some people today, but it's true. There were fans were so concerned they admitted this story on live television that they called hmm. the uh, police station. And uh, I don't think it was 300 people, like they claimed, but uh, it was there were people who called. Mm-hmm. So, uh, hey, listen, if you didn't like it, I mean, if you thought it was... Uh, I heard people say it was too close to uh, when Jay Briscoe passed away. Mm-hmm. If you feel that, I mean, I'm not going to say, you know, but it was not meant to uh, make fun of the Briscoes or Jay Briscoe or the family. It had nothing to do with that at all. It just happened to be a car wreck story two weeks later. And if you think it was too early, you know, that's fine. But that was not the intention of this promo. Well, there's not the, uh, you know, Jay Briscoe is not the only person to suffer a car accident. And so I'm sure this story could... Close to home for a lot of people watching. Yes, including our own Filthy Tom. Filthy Tom. Uh, and that take, you know, you watch wrestling for entertainment. You don't want to be reminded of things that suck. And so it, it, I'm sure for a lot of people, this is some heavy, heavy go away heat. So uh, um, so that didn't work in that sense. And then if, if you just take it as a show, again, he just confessed to some level of crime. I'm not, I'm not an attorney, and again, it's not clear from his story if she lived or died. So I'm not sure exactly what he confessed to, but if nothing else, I would think the family would have a massive civil suit here. Well, I mean... Maybe that'll follow up. I don't think that's going to be the Maybe he'll get here, served maybe. next week. 
By the way, since people have been bringing that up all day, so the quarters, okay, quarter hours, the uh, the most watched thing on the show was MGF's match with Takeshita. Now, part of the first quarter is always the overrun, okay? But the match did go into the second quarter and remained over 1 million. So that was the most watched thing on the show. This promo was followed by the Brian Danielson and Roosh match. Huh. And that match, uh, that quarter grew a lot, okay? So, you know, it's possible that people watched this promo and decided they didn't want to watch the show anymore. But we actually have zero evidence of that because immediately following the promo, there was large growth. And uh, the lowest thing, the lowest rated thing on the show, would you like to guess? Uh, probably the main event. The gun club oh, good. going for the that's tag re- team. That is reassuring. This was uh, mm-hmm. the lowest rated thing on the show. So that's your update. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets... Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any, anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her... It's going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday night... Bra. This is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> what a crummy show. Oh. Wow! What do you want me to so, do about it? What the... If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.